That's the first tick on the index. Uh, the Sensex and the Nifty up about three tenths of a percent. The benchmark indices are holding up in the green. It's up 70 points on the Nifty. Markets are picking up. It's more than 17,900. We've got, uh, what, 160, 165 points. These are strong gains from the word go on the Nifty. So we're going to end at 17,919, which is 150 points higher. It's a strong close, uh, but I think we could not build further on the gains that we already started with. Hello and welcome to CNBC TV 18. You're watching Markets Today, the show where we track about the six hours of the day's trading action in five headlines. I am Reema Tendulkar and these are the headlines for the day. Healthy moves in select large cap majors help Indian indices notch gains. The Nifty and the Sensex gain nearly a percentage point each. Mid caps underperform, keeping the market breadth in favor of the declines. Consumer price inflation rises 6.5% in January, well above expectations, raising risks of further rate hikes by the RBI. Realty stocks fall on fears of higher costs and lower demand. And in today's big earnings, a dip in profitability pushes Nika 5% lower. Nuvama cuts the target on the stock, lowers its EBITDA outlook. Bharat Forge slips despite a revenue and EBITDA beat as domestic revenues slow and margins miss estimates. A margin miss also hurts Aisha Motors, a stock that closes 3% down. Adani Group stocks remain largely under pressure. However, Adani Enterprises regained some lost ground after reporting a 42% growth in revenues. Meanwhile, Supreme Court suggests setting up an expert panel to review investor protection rules in light of the Adani shares crash. Oil prices soften after United States says it will sell more crude from its strategic reserve. Restarting of exports from Turkey's Sehan port also weighs on prices. And here is a lineup of what we have for you in store today on Markets Today. We get you market opinion from Andrew Holland, CEO at Avendis Alternate Strategies. In Corporate Voices, we have VS Money, ED and Global CFO, Glenmark Farmer. Straight to the day's trading action then. The Lao Street ended the day largely higher. The Nifty and the Sensex closed a percentage point higher, led by strength in healthy individual select large cap names. So Reliance, ITC, ICICI Bank, many of the IT names were also big contributors on the way up. But the mid caps underperform and the advanced decline ratio ended in favor of the losing side. The mid cap index was down close to about a quarter of a percent. Prashant is here with the day's trading action. Ever since the day of the budget, the market's been uh, trading water within the range. The high of the budget day and the low of the budget day has been the range and the market's been within this band uh, ever since. Today, there was a real attempt to break out of that range. We didn't cross the budget day high, fell short by 20, 30 points, but it was a good close. 0.8% gains on the Nifty and similar kind of gains on the bank Nifty uh, as well. Let me tell you sectorally, top down what did well. Metals uh, stood out. Uh, you know, FMCG as a pack was doing very well. PSU banks were well bid. And the IT services space, especially mid-cap tech, uh, did quite uh, okay. Uh, large caps, gains coming through in names like UPL, ITC, Reliance Industries, Adani Ports, Adani Enterprises. Enterprises, of course, reported numbers as well. And then Bajaj Finance, which is slowly but surely creeping up after a poor 2022. What was down were names like Apollo Hospitals, Aisha, which of course was reacting to numbers, and SBI Life, which saw more profit-taking. In the broader market, I mean, it was clean uh, two is to one, advanced, declines to advances. So market breadth was negative for the second day in a, uh, second day in a row. All cargo reacting to sh uh, poor numbers, sharply down, India Bulls Real Estate, Adani Wilmar, Policy Bazaar, Spark, GICRE, Star Health, Gati, and so many other names which saw uh, uh, sell-offs. There were gainers as well, an outsized one, some in response to earnings. Oil India was one, for example. Uh, there was Mirza International in response to numbers, HBL Power in response to a guidance, Newland, Punawala FinCorp, and so on and so forth. The market has given a signal that it perhaps is now closer to the upper end of the budget day range as compared to the lower end. The question is, can we break out of this range? And I think the one determinant, the big global market determinant, is going to be the January U.S. consumer price inflation report, which we get later today, which could set the tone one way or the other. Back to you. Thank you very much for that, Prashant. That's going to be the big cue, the U.S. CPI inflation print. But ahead of that, in the Indian markets have closed with considerable strength. Let's carry some market opinion then. Andrew Holland of Avendis Alternate Strategies says... Rate hike cycle is coming to an end, adds that it may be time to bet on large cap IT stocks. 
we are coming to the end of the uh, the, the kind of tightening cycle, uh, both globally and and locally. And I, I think the you know from what I've seen of the RBI, they they too seem to be kind of following the Fed. Now, listen, every country is going to have a different part of its inflation as is more food and oil um, and in the US it's more shelter but um, I'm sure today we'll see some 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 figures from the US you know, you know showing that inflation is continuing to trend downwards uh, from where we were at the heights um, so I think you know everyone's baking in anyway 25 basis points for uh, for the US uh, in March um, unless data changes that um, so you know it wouldn't be surprising if we did our you know number 25 but that's probably it I'd probably stick more to the to the large cap IT uh, only because I think you have to be a little bit nimble in terms of your your strategy. Um, you know, if, if if we're correct in saying that the Fed goes on hold, and that's what the market's been saying in terms of the tech stocks in the US, then um, you know that's a good tailwind. But obviously, data it'll be a little bit data dependent in the short term. Okay, let's move on. Consumer price inflation rose 6.5% in January, well above expectations of 6%. Now, this has raised the risk of further rate hikes by the Reserve Bank of India. The RBI MPC meets only in the month of April, but the market is fearful and watchful. The news weighed on real estate stocks, which fell on fears of higher costs and lower demand. Lata is here joining in to tell us more about the numbers and the impact it could have on the realty sector. It's above the 2 to 6% mandate within which CPI has to be kept. But more importantly, 65 was not even uh, the most pessimistic uh, estimate on the street. Uh, at the poll as was 6.1%. And what's bad is it's entirely driven by food. Food was 4.19% higher in uh, December. It's 5.94, I mean, almost 1.8 percentage points higher in terms of the momentum with which uh, food inflation is rising, largely led by cereals, which has a 12% weight in the entire index. I mean, it's a national staple food. And cereals has gone up by 2.6% month on month, 16.2% year on year. And the WPI numbers we just came out are also indicating that uh, cereals inflation is up about 1.9% even at the wholesale level. Now, uh, all this has led to a fear that the Reserve Bank is likely to increase the interest rates quite definitely when uh, we come to the April policy. Until now, it was like a 50-50 expectation. Now, practically everyone has moved to a rate hike assumption. And that is very clearly reflected in the uh, bond market rates. Uh, the bond market 10-year uh, yield itself has moved up by about uh, three or four basis points. 7.36 at close, touch 7.4 at some, uh, in early morning trades on uh, uh, Tuesday. More importantly, the OIS, overnight index swaps, which is a very clean market where you can express your uh, fears, there the uh, yields have gone up by 10 basis points, clearly indicating that a rate hike is now getting uh, uh, discounted. The biggest sufferers on this equity markets were the real estate companies. For them, it's not just a question of higher cost of money, uh, which is, of course, for the entire uh, country, but real estate companies tend to be heavily dependent uh, are heavily leveraged. So the cost of money increases for them. The demand may simultaneously fall when uh, you know buyers of homes are faced with higher and higher EMIs. They may go for smaller homes or cheaper homes. So uh, the real realty sector is clearly indicating uh, that uh, you know the higher rates are going to you know hurt them rather badly. Thank you very much for that. Let's get to the third headline for the day. Aisha Motors lost more than 2% despite an inline set of numbers, at least on the revenues and, and the profitability. Margins, though, were slightly lower than what the street was anticipating. This is the second straight quarter that the auto major has seen a drop in margins. Sonia is here with the highlights. Thanks a lot for that. If you look through the numbers, uh, you know, carefully, you'll notice that the margins are under pressure for two consecutive quarters now. In fact, uh, the margins at 23% are below the estimates of 23.8%, and it's a 30 basis points quarter on quarter fall that we've seen in margins. Now, if you pull up a trend of the last four or five quarters, you'll notice that, um, you know, over the last four, uh, three quarters, the margins have fallen from 24.5% to 23%, and that's perhaps because of uh, the higher sales of its low margin 
Virgin Hunter 350cc. Now, the Hunter 350cc, which was recently launched, is a product that's doing very well, but it's dragging the blended margins lower, and that's something that has worried the street for a bit, and hence the stock could be under pressure. Otherwise, if you look at it, no real problem on the top line. The revenue growth of around 30 odd percent coming in at 3,720 crores. The core EBITDA as well has gone up about 47.2 percent, but it is this blended margin drag because of the new product, which is something that is spooking the street. Back to you. Sonia, thank you very much for that. But do stay with us because Bharat Forge also reported their numbers. The stock slipped. What is it that disappointed the street? Well, Bharat Forge earnings was under a bit of pressure for a couple of reasons. On one hand, the domestic revenue growth has slowed down to low single digits. Apart from that, the debt of the company optically has gone up, although the management do, does say that they're sitting on a large cash pile. Hence, uh, you know, the debt is not too much of a concern. The other issue is that the overseas subsidiary continues to report losses. It's the second consecutive quarter of losses there. And the company does say that they have some ramp-up issues that they are facing. Also, there is some uh, information inflation problem that their overseas clients are facing, hence the pressure seen on their overseas subsidiaries. And finally, the margins for Bharat Forge were below what the street was estimating. It was largely flat on a year-on-year -year basis. So these were a couple of reasons why the stock was under pressure today. The management, though, is quite confident. They believe that put together with the defense orders that they've gotten, there's a double-digit growth that they are expecting in FY24. Back to you. Uh, thank you very much for that. Another stock on our radar was Nika. It slipped 5% in trade. It reported a dip in profitability in Q3. Uh, weak brokerage commentary also weighed on the stock. Mangalam is here with the highlights. Mangalam. But as far as Nika is concerned, you know, the revenue growth of the company was pretty much in line with what the street was anticipating. However, it was the composition of the revenue growth and its resultant impact on the margins that has the street and the brokerages worried. If you just take a look at what Goldman Sachs has said, they've said that they've been positively surprised by the acceleration in their fashion business, which grew at around 50-odd percent. But the BPC segment, beauty and personal care, which is the core of the business, grew just 26 percent, and that was a negative surprise. However, they have a neutral rating on the stock with a target of 200 rupees per share. Another company which has 200 rupees per share as the target on Nika is Jefferies, which has a buy rating. And they say that, you know, the gross merchandise value growth was led by fashion and others on a low base. Other segments actually grew over 250 odd percent and uh, the BPC or beauty and personal care grew 25 percent largely due to a high base and shift in the festive season at the same time was impacted a little by the weak demand overall the gross margins of the company were below expectations because of inferior mix the discounting that the company had done and because of weak demand environment some down trading that took place by customers as well as the company continues its investments in eb2b offline expansion and own labels this is something that they will watch out for and finally, we have Nuwama, the erstwhile Edelweiss, has cut the target price from 251 to 195 because of lower EBITDA expectations. So they've lowered their EBITDA expectations by about 8% for this year. But importantly, in their model, they've upped the cost of capital assumption as well, as a result of which the discounting factor has increased. 